folks, and um, you can see my new 50 watt multicolour multiband LED has arrived. It's got seven different light frequencies, and I'm going to um, turn that into a little grow light for my little growing setup here. Because, um, I'll just move you guys around. Hang on, come with me. But my little seedlings here under this work light have uh, kind of outgrown their space, and I need to move them up to bigger pots now and I'm going to get the ultrasonic routing chamber on the go in there but that means I need more light there and I need the light to be more dispersed. So I thought I'd give you a closer look at this module, um, a lot closer. Let's get in there. Now this type of big LED like this is sometimes referred to as a light engine and you can see that there's actually a 10 by 10 grid of LEDs in there. That's 100 LEDs, they're each 1 watt rated making it a 100 watt LED allegedly. Um, and you can see that actually there's just 10 strings of them going horizontally across the screen, um, 10 in a row of 10 LEDs, and each line has a variety of different colours on there. There's a bunch of LEDs in different frequencies in the red spectrum, which are the red looking ones, and there's a bunch of them in the blues as well, and there's some in the uh, very, very deep red or near infrared, which are those six kind of black looking ones you can see there. I'll zoom in a bit closer and we can have a look at some individual LEDs as well. So that, there's a better look at the strings of LEDs. You can see the bond wires just glued in the corner of the uh, little LED dies there. And uh, they seem to take power in it. Well, some of them take power in at the back and send it out the front. Some of them take power from one side to the other. And there's a, a bundle of different types, as I say, seven different types there. Let's see how close we can get with this. Now that's a pretty good shot of one of the red LEDs there, and uh, you can see the blue next to it. So that's one of the near infrared ones, which um, I'm not sure that one's illuminated. I mean it must be passing a current through because the ones either side of it are lit up. That's a very very dark red. Um, camera doesn't show that at all. I mean that doesn't look visible not on the camera either. So that's one of our blue LEDs. And now uh, we've got another kind of blue LED, if I just knock the... Uh... There we go, and that's more of a purpley sort of blue one there. So we've got a whole bunch of different ones. So, a few years back, I bought this um, massive heatsink for my PC and never actually used it because the CPU came with a heatsink. So um, I'm going to strap those two together. I might take this out of the box first and um, see what I can do about making some kind of power supply for that and that can take care of my seedlings for the next month or so. See what I can do. I haven't actually looked in this box. Oh, comes with thermal compound, it's nice. <clears throat> this should be more than sufficient for keeping an LED cool. Um, what's brought this on is, ever since I saw the light that Brock Hughes was looking at a few months ago, um, that's what got me looking for all of this. I started looking at the different LEDs that were available and trying to find multi-spectrum ones. Oh, practically made to fit on there. Uh, I just need to find a way of clamping it together, which won't be too difficult. I don't actually even need to drill holes, I don't think, if I clamp that. Yeah, Let's see what I can knock up. But yeah, I mean, given that's designed for a PC, that should be more than sufficient to get the heat off. That'll take like a 150 watt processor, um, with a fan on it, obviously. So it should be good for a 100 watt LED, and I'm planning on underdriving this anyway, because I don't actually need 100 watts of light output at the moment. So, um, yeah, see what I can work, work out with that. I think this is going to be a really quick build. Did I just say? I thought I had a really quick plan for building this. Um, bulldog clips. I've just clipped it onto the side of the LED and that does an excellent job of clamping it onto the base of this heat sink. So I'm going to take off the uh, actual clip parts and the rest can stay there. And that will do nicely. And now I can start to ramp up the power on this thing. And I'll just show you this though. This turns my eyes funny. It also throws out your white balance totally. It's, um, I don't know how the camera is going to pick it up but uh, when you start to whack a bit of power through this, um, the, it's a lovely pink colour light and it kind of gets a bit pinky white as you crank it up. So, nearly there. Um, 
There you go, that's pushing 78 watts of power through that now. And it is um, crazily bright, I'm not going to look at that. And it's very, very pink, and it, uh, uh, camera's white balance doesn't seem to do too badly with it, but it really throws your eyes out. Um, so I'm going to run that for a little while, um, see how hot this heatsink gets, probably mount a fan on there as well to keep it cool, and then um, work out some kind of power supply to operate all of this off. And I've got a cunning plan for that as well, which I don't think is going to take me long. Leave that running at full tilt for a while. Oh, my eyes really does mess with your eyes. Okay, so this LED runs on somewhere between 22 and 25 volts, so let's call it 24 volts for convenience. This fan only, only runs on 12 volts. My plan was to get a little 12 volt voltage regulator and just stick it in series, but I didn't find one in my list of parts. So I've googled and I've found this series pass voltage regulator circuit. Um, scavenged an old transistor that came out of a power supply somewhere and it's just a resistor and a zener diode and that should theoretically give me a regulated 12 volts for the fan. Well that seems to work, success first time. I've got uh, 24 volts going in there, or 26 volts going in there. Um, my regulator's giving me a steady 11 and a half out and if I crank that down, so we'll just drop that down, uh, yeah we are doing the voltage there. I drop that down, uh, let's go for something in the middle, there we are, 17, and we're still getting 11 and a half out there. there go, so I've got that fan hooked in now, so whenever there's power for the LED, it's just running on about 17 volts at the moment, and there's power for the fan. And uh, I don't need to worry about what voltage I'm feeding the LED, um, up until about 25 volts, which is what it needs anyway. And um, the whole thing's going to be current limited, so it's never going to get above 25 volts, so I'm always going to have a fan working. I'm going to give that a test at higher power now and see how hot it gets. Well, this setup's been running now for about 20 minutes at 75 watts power. Um, this module, incidentally, is rated at 3.2 amps at 24 volts, and it claims to be a 100 watt module, but of course 3.2 amps at 24 volts is 75 watts, which is what I'm feeding it. Um, anyway, it's been running for about 20 minutes now, and it's not getting at all hot there. Um, I think I've got sufficient cooling on that without a problem. So I'm going to turn my attention to some kind of more convenient power supply for it because I'm just running it off the bench supply for now. Now here's my first attempt at driving this thing. I've got this uh, sort of variable switch mode power supply thing that will deliver anything from 15 up to 24 volts and it's 120 watt rated. And um, I thought I might be able to use this horrible 400 watt boost converter. But um, let me just show you what happens when I switch that on. So first of all it tries to short out the uh, switch mode power supply, eventually it kicks up but I don't know if you can hear that lovely whistling and it's both this power supply and these inductors here that are making the whistling so I'm going to try this 600 watt converter instead and see if that uh, starts up in a more behaved fashion and uh, doesn't make such a horrible noise. And once again proving its value for money this 600 watt unit, no screaming noise nice stable output voltage, nice current regulation and turns on and off cleanly without any fuss so I think that's what I'm going to be using as my um, driver circuit for that for now um, I'm going to run it at 3.2 amps because there's some um, that only actually equals 75 watts at the moment, 80 watts or so um, it is rated at 100 watts but the description on eBay says 3.2 amps 24 volts which is 80 so I've queried the seller and I'll see what they come back with but um, I'll string that together into some kind of uh, prettier order now. Excellent. Well, here we go, folks. Here's the completed unit. Um, I've just tied on this boost converter using some plastic wrapped wire. Uh, but that holds it nicely in position on the top there. And it also happens to balance the weight nicely from the fan. So the centre of gravity is not too far out, a little bit out of the centre. But um, I can now suspend that in my little frame above my lights, above my plants, and um, see if it gets some results, and I can transfer the plants over to bigger pots. Nice bit of design, that. Nice little bodge. Nice bit of hackery. Very pleased with that. Excellent. So in terms of project costs, we're uh, 50 quid for the LED. Um, $77, I think. Uh, £9.29 for the boost converter, so somewhere around about $15. 
The heat sink I already had, but that was probably 20 quid thereabouts. The fan, don't know, fiver. Um, probably not cost effective versus just buying a ready made unit, but I didn't want, they didn't have ready made units that were quite what I wanted, and this is more fun. So um, I'll plug it in and uh, get it going now. So it kind of washes the camera out now, but um, that's the new pinky blue grow light versus the uh, old one I had on the go there, which kicked out quite a lot of heat. So I'm going to wrap that in white black plastic now because um, it's going to distract me when I'm watching telly otherwise. There we go, I've wrapped all that in the uh, white black plastic now, so white on the inside, black on the outside. Dazzling to the camera, but some happy lettuce there, and um, transferring them to the root growth chamber, rooting chambers. Gonna have to wait until tomorrow because it's clocking on towards midnight here. And um, I want to get this edited and I'll put this up. So I um, hope you enjoyed all that, folks. That was my um, how to build a seven color multi band LED grow light for about 70 quid. So yeah, cheers, folks. See you next time. Oh, actually, while you're here, quick sneak preview. Um, this is what I'm working on at the moment for the Mixologist project. So I've got a bunch of these displays to show which different nutrients I'm dispensing. Um, I'm going to try and get them all strung up and all working. Uh, not as easy as it might sound. Anyway, see you next time, folks. Bye.